You've probably seen the news blowing up with every billionaire analyst and econ guru screaming, financial crisis ahead. We're talking big names here, like Warren Buffett and Charlie Munga sounding alarms on housing market speculations, and Michael Boo, the legend behind The Big Short, throwing down a whopping $1.6 billion bet on a stock market nosedive. And let's not forget Barry Stern, the real estate tycoon, predicting an economic storm brewing on the horizon. No shocker then that a whopping 70% of folks across the US are bracing for a recession. Feels like we're teetering on the edge of a fiscal cliff, doesn't it? But hey, if you sneak a peek at Wikipedia's list of US recessions, you'll see that these economic hiccups are part and parcel of our financial world. They're like the economy's reset button. But ever since the Fed got its hands on the wheel, We've been seeing these longer stretches of good times. We're talking six, seven, even eight years of smooth sailing. Heck, we hit a record of over 10 years of economic sunshine before the clouds rolled in again. You know Michael Burry, right? The big short guy, the legend who saw the 2008 crash coming when everyone else was partying on Wall Street. This time, it's all about handling recessions, those sneaky economic beasts that creep up just when you think everything's fine and dandy. Burry's got seven killer tips to not just survive, but thrive when the economy decides to play roller coaster. Number one, never ditch the cash. When things hit the fan, having cash is your financial safety net. It's easy to get swept up in the crypto and digital art frenzy when the sun's shining. But when storm clouds gather, even the big guys start liquidating their flashy assets for good old cash. Take Warren Buffett, for example. He keeps a lot of cash, waiting for a good opportunity. So, what's our plan? Start simple. Slash those extras. That daily latte or the latest sneakers might seem small, but hey, they add up. And with prices skyrocketing, every buck you tuck away is a win. Plus, with all these supply chain headaches, prices are only heading one way, up. So, if you're aiming to come out of the next financial storm unscathed, remember, save like a pro. Number two, let's talk investments. When the economic tide turns, a lot of businesses get slammed. Some don't make it. Remember, behind every business are people with their own bills and families. In crises like the 2008 meltdown, even giants like General Motors and AIG were scrambling for a lifeline. So if you're putting your money somewhere, think about companies that aren't just scraping by. We're talking about firms with a financial cushion, a safety net of their own. Take Apple and Microsoft. These guys have money reserves like you wouldn't believe. Sure, they might lose a bit to inflation, but they'd rather take that hit than face a money crunch. During a recession, you can check how much money a company has by looking at its financial reports, especially the balance sheet. The balance sheet's your crystal ball here, showing you who's really prepared for the long haul. Just remember, not every company can be an Apple, so choose wisely. Number three, a recession might just be your golden ticket. Sounds wild, right? But it's true. When the economy's booming, try elbowing your way past the big dogs. But when the economy hits a rough patch, that's when the giants stumble and the little guys get their shot. Take WhatsApp, for instance. Born in the ashes of 2009's economic meltdown, it later cashed in a whopping $19 billion from Facebook. And now, it's a global beast with over 2 billion users. Uber, too, kicked off in 2009, and despite the odds, it's now valued at about $50 billion. And let's not forget about Bitcoin, a brainchild of the 2008 crisis. But hey, it's not just about starting a business. It's about seizing the moment. When times are tough, stepping up at work could be your fast track to the top. Last recession, junior managers became big shots almost overnight. Number four, let's talk about staying cool when the market's not. That's what don't cash out is all about. Picture this, you jumped on the Bitcoin bandwagon when it was just a grand a pop, then whoosh, it skyrockets and you're sitting there, wide-eyed, watching your investment go to the moon Feels good, right? But here's the kicker. When the market takes a nosedive, your once booming portfolio now looks like a sinking ship. That's when panic kicks in. 
people start thinking it's doomsday for their investments, and the sell-off frenzy begins. But let's be real, unless we're in a zombie apocalypse, cashing out at the bottom is like jumping off a roller coaster mid-ride. The winners those who played the long game, not the panic sellers. So, when you feel the itch to cash out because everything's going south, remember, it's a cycle. Markets dip, then they bounce back. Sure, it takes nerves of steel and the patience of a saint, but that's the game. So, number five. After the crash, if you didn't sell out, you're playing the long game. Smart move. Patience is key. Now, about the gig economy. That's your secret weapon in a recession. Traditional jobs might dry up, but gigs? Got a skill? Sell it online. Writing, designing, coding. Whatever you've got, there's a market for it. And hey, you don't need to be a guru from day one. Start small, charge a bit, and climb that price ladder as you buff up your skills. Think of your skills as your personal economic bunker. In times when the financial world is doing somersaults, being able to whip out a skill set that's in demand is like having an emergency fund, but better. It's about creating multiple streams of income. So if one dries up, you're not left high and dry. And for those wondering where to jumpstart, Places like Fiverr and Upwork are your golden tickets. They're the platforms where your skills can shine and where the rule of the land is simple. The more you hone your craft, the more you earn. So, in a nutshell, diversify what you do for money, keep polishing those skills, and you'll navigate through the economic turbulence like a pro. Number six, steer clear of debt. If you're not ready for a recession, brace yourself, it's gonna be rough. People often fall into debt just trying to cover the basics. And when the Fed cranks up the rates to pop financial bubbles or tame inflation, debt gets pricier. Remember 2007? Peak housing bubble? The Fed jacked up rates to 5.25%. Consumer rates were through the roof. Recessions can widen the gap between the haves and have-nots. The less you have, the more you might have to borrow just to put food on the table. Meanwhile, the well-off use their cash stash to snatch up opportunities. All right, let's wrap this up with a golden finale, literally. When the economic seas get choppy, it's time to think about good old gold and silver. These shiny friends are like your financial rock. They've been valuable since, well, forever. Why? Because they're rare, hard to dig up, and their value isn't tied to the usual market swings. Unlike stocks and bonds that ride the economic waves, gold and silver are like the steady rocks in the investment world. They're the go-to for people looking to park their money somewhere safe. And it's not just about one country's economy. These metals have a global fan club, so they're a smart move even when the whole world's economic boat is rocking.